Now, I'd like two eggs over hard. Kumate, 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 Welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. Welcome to PCP Movie Night. We are kicking off Van Damme November tonight with a look at a movie that we actually covered here on the channel already. Four years ago, no me, Jelani, and Brooks here, when we did movie reviews in person, we did a, let me tell you what happened. We were trying to get everybody to choose Street Fighter for us. So we did a movie poll, video game movie adaptations, and Mortal Kombat won, Street Fighter was number two. Then we did a Van, a Van Damme poll, Bloodsport won, Street Fighter was second. Then eventually we just did Street Fighter just for the fuck of it. But tonight, we're here to revisit Bloodsport. Jean-Claude Van Damme. It is Van Damme November. This is why we're doing it. Back in like February, we did Cyborg by Van Damme. It is now almost at 300,000 views here on YouTube. By far our biggest video ever. Maybe it's because Jelani wasn't there. We're testing that theory tonight. We're dedicating wow. all of November to Jean-Claude Van Damme and his masterful work. And tonight we're here to talk about 1988's blood sport based on the true story of Frank <laughs> Dukes and uh it's I love this fucking movie and I love it even more than I did as a kid and I love it even more than I did four years ago when we talked about this movie the last time this movie blows my mind apart direct inspiration to things like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Now, obviously, we had Enter the Dragon beforehand and, and things like that, right? But I'm going to tell you something. The bullshit stories from Frank Dukes has created so much money for Acclaim and Capcom. You know what I'm saying? Like, they are milking these fucking bullshit lies. However, you cannot deny the greatness of this movie or the fact that it might be one of the greatest films in cinematic history. We're talking about Bloodsport tonight, y'all. It is directed by Newt Arnold, which sounds like a made-up name um, for <laughs> sure. Um, a few different writers, and shooting, including Sheldon uh, Lidia, or Lidich, Ledich, whatever his name is, who first heard this story from Frank Dukes, and he's on record as saying, his story sounded like complete fabricated bullshit but it also sounded like a really good movie. And it is. I love this movie. I loved this movie when I was a kid. I used to get it confused with Kickboxer. I used to think that Ogre from the Nerds was his brother and died in this movie. Then I found out that's a whole other movie. I was getting two movies confused, right? This is pure macho masculinity. Like this is just like the epitome of what you think of when you think of like the guy's movie. Like when Spike TV first started, I'm surprised they didn't run Bloodsport 24 fucking 7. This is a man's man's movie. And it's also a man who likes man's movie. You know what I'm saying? This movie is sexy. This movie is ridiculous. This movie is stupid. But this movie is also fucking awesome, in my opinion. 
it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Why we don't have a truly elaborate and dedicated Blu-ray box set for this blows my mind apart. I'm having to watch it on Shout Factory TV, Amazon Prime shit. Like, what, what the fuck is going on, man? Um, this movie is a cinematic classic. I would even say it's cinemagic in a way. So, Verno. Here you are to talk about this movie. Me, Jelani, and Brooks, we've already talked about this, and I'm sure we love it more today. But I'm curious. You chose to be here. Oh, yeah. What did you think about this film, bro? Uh, on the rewatch, I loved it, man. This is one, just I'm sure like all of us, like I grew up with this, watching this constantly. It was, it was always on. Yeah. And it was like the the epitome of like like the 80s to me, especially those kung fu movies. I was so into this. I don't know if it's kung fu or not. I might already be uh, showing my ignorance. But the martial arts movies. But uh, on the rewatch, it was awesome. It's cheesier than I remember, by far. Like not like I didn't realize how cheesy it was twenty five years ago. But it's awesome, man. The music is so eighties. The Van Dam is so Van Dam. The fight scenes are super memorable and iconic. Like the the images of this, like me and my brother used to imitate Van Dam in slow motion, like so much. So it was an awesome revisit and it was it was honestly i enjoyed it more than i even thought i would i did watch it two times and i had to watch it two times because i watched it and then i was like oh hell yeah i'm into this and then i watched kickboxer <laughs> and then afterwards i'm like there's no way i'm not going to mix these up like the whole time so i need to rewatch blood sport and thank god i did because they're like the I same said, thing yeah, i spent my whole childhood mixing up those two movies dude i really <laughs> did and like when we watched this movie like a little bit over four years ago like 2019 pre-COVID world, like it feels like a whole different age, right? Mm -hmm. In an age of wonder, right? But uh, when I remember watching, we were talking about that. I was like, you know, I thought Ogre was his brother and he died in this movie, but like, and, and his name is, is Jackson or something, right? Is Ogre's from Revenge of the Nerds. But uh, <laughs> dude, I love this movie. Super excited that you uh, loved it on your two rewatches this oh, yeah. week, man. Oh, yeah. What about you, Jelani? How, how does this movie uh, hold up for you, bro? This movie is fantastic. It's something about it. It is one of those like touchstone things. It's my internet. I'm going to be late. Can you hear me? Anyhow. We can hear you. You're just delayed. That's yeah. fine. You're good. You're good. You're, good. You're Delaney today. Hey. I'm delayed. <laughs> yeah, this is my time I've done it in my new house. This is my new house. Oh so, no, don't say that. Uh, now you're fucking up. <laughs> Blood sports awesome. <laughs> Jelani, so, just tell us what you think about the movie. What? Come on, please. <laughs> oh no. I am. I love this movie. It's bothering me that like the internet's not working. Y'all are giggling like school children. They're never gonna hit a million views so now, stop man. It. Yeah. <laughs> I I watched ruined it. I Let's know. start the whole goddamn thing. Fuck it. We're starting over. Let's start over. Oh, <laughs> we'll do it live. Anyway. <laughs> I like doing live. Fuck it. Blood sport. Next. I like blood sport. Next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Succinct. Brooks, what do you Dang. think about he finally got to, he finally got the memo? Brief and concise. Um, <laughs> Brooks, what do you think about blood sport, my man? Well, Bloodsport was a movie I hadn't seen until I watched it with you four years ago. And I remember we, we both loved the shit out of this movie. Like, we were like, like, after we watched it, we were like teenagers who just watched, like, you know, a new movie in the theater. We were like, oh, dude, like, you know. And uh, on the rewatch, I, I still love this movie. Like, at first, I was like, man, like, you know, the character development stuff with Frank, I was like, this is kind of boring. But then once the Kumite hits, like, it's like, it doesn't matter anymore. And then once once Bolo comes on the screen, it's like oh, and it's like, and then like it's like Forrest Whitaker's in this movie too. What? <laughs> I always forget his ass yeah, is in this too. movie, I'm man. Like, oh yeah, that's right. Forrest Whitaker is in this movie. It's like this when movie... you watch Fast Times at Richmond High, and you're like, fuck, Forrest Whitaker's in this one too. <laughs> Five degrees of Forrest Whitaker. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but yeah, this movie is like, it's a, it is what you want from like a, a martial arts movie like this like you know it's it's t like I, it's total bullshit like the whole thing is like i don't i don't think any of this fucking shit ever happened but it's entertaining as, as hell and like the characters are so like ridiculously one note like it's, it's a simple man's movie you can just turn off your brain and just enjoy the fights and this movie yeah. does have some pretty good fights in it so 
So it's got some great fights. I remember being a kid and seeing how the mat progressively continuously gets bloodier and bloodier. Yeah. That kind of attention to detail, whoever is the continuity director here on this Bloody. movie, yeah. they're kicking it. They're yeah, killing it. Bro. You know, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Such a great movie. Joe blood sport. You chose it. Why are you here? I did. Well, uh, first I, I gotta say Van Dam. Thank you, ma'am. I think that's, uh, I don't know what that really means here, but I thought of it earlier and I just had to say it. But um, I like beyond it. that, I'll also say, so I watched Godfather 2 on Friday with a friend who had never seen it before. And the director, Newt Arnold, of this movie was the first assistant director on Godfather 2. So... <laughs> No wonder this is so good. <laughs> right? Exactly. I was like, what? Why? There's Godfather 2 connectors here. But um, but that and even though this movie is based on a lie, uh, some of the greatest things we experience on Earth are based on lies. Santa Claus, heaven, love, redemption, all oh. lies. <laughs> so I think it's right up there in the pantheon of the greatest lies of our time. <laughs> nice I, I i actually really like that um thank you it's not like mortal kombat sean 420 mortal <laughs> kombat is like blood sport right, right. <laughs> and, and there's that one moment where they're like fatality and dude bolo young gets the fucking button mashing yeah. right and he just fucking does it it's great speaking of the actors in this film this movie is anchored by brilliant performances <laughs> That I think, no, we can really go to town with this. There are some really great performances, some interesting characters throughout this movie. Verno, kick us off. Oh. What's your favorite performance in the Oh, film? I'm so happy to get to go first. When I was making the decision, it was a kickboxer was open and Bloodsport was open. I couldn't remember, so I had to start like looking at the images that pop up when I searched it. And as soon as I saw Chung Lee, I'm like, that one. That's the dude I want to talk about. That's the movie I want to see with that guy in it. Like, I wasn't a Star Wars fan when I was a kid. So that dude was my Darth Vader. He's, like, the scariest looking dude. Just his, his facial structure, his body build. He's, like, so unique looking. And how much of, a like, an asshole they make him in this movie. Such a heartless, cold-blooded killer that he is in the film. Like, and everything that he was ever in that I saw. I did a little research. Turns out he did play some good guys in the 90s, but I never saw any of those roles. To me, he's just the scariest man to ever kick a dude in the nuts. And Chong Lee, man, he, all, all the way. The look, too. Just his dress, his outfit, his headband. Chong Lee, baby. Bricks don't hit back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Jelani, what about you? What's a performance you want to highlight? Well, Bloodsport has so many great fights and so many different things that happen. And the character that I would pick is the, and since it's Bloodsport and they're good characters, I don't want to take people away. I'm picking the guy that was Sagat. <laughs> Basically, the guy that was Sagat, the one that did all the knee kicks, all the tiger kicks. He got. Oh, um, Chong, oh, that's the dude that played Sagat, Duke, dude. Like beat his butt before Bolo, where he got to Bolo. Dude, the thing is, I didn't see. No, that in it's this just movie. no. It's a guy that does like so the Sagat, dude. Yeah, he's got like, yeah, the oh. paws up and stuff. Oh. But I love that character. I love all the characters in this movie, except for probably, I don't know, the the combo with Forrest Whitaker and that guy. They're so goofy. Why didn't you just arrest Frank Duke? Like, He's the second good, you man. saw him and, and, and tased him again Frank or Duke. something. <laughs> he he they tried good. to, and he's just he like running the away. Yeah, he's he's in a Mentos commercial like Verno shared in the PCP Army, right? <laughs> I had to share that just in case friends. anyone had never yeah. seen that commercial. That was awesome. <laughs> but yeah, I would take. I picked that guy because he was such an excellent fighter. I don't know what it was like. This movie's all about fights, more than most of the character anyway. And and I would have picked Charlie Lee too, man. I think I picked Charlie Lee the last time. I don't remember, but 
That I mean, raise your hands if you've never beat strikes, off thinking about Chong Lee. Right? Like, I was like, God damn. I'm sorry, I forgot the rule but not to totally talk while Delaney's so. talking because he's on a delay. Right. All right. <laughs> so you pick Sagat in this film. I, I like that, Jelani. What about you, Brooks? What's a performance you want to highlight? I like I like the I think he was he was the African fighter, the guy who was like always like, you know, he was always hunched over. He was like swinging his arm around. He like he rolled all over the There's place. Like the monkey. And I was like, man, I wish that dude yeah. that was more of a character in this movie. And this is like this movie feels like, you know, yeah. Mortal Kombat feels like it's more inspired by Enter the Dragon, but like this movie feels more like Street Fighter. Like, you know, it's just a bunch of, like it, it focuses more on, you know, the, the idea of like all these different styles from different parts of the world coming together, you know, to just fight it out. And uh, he, like, he, he reminds me of Blanca, kind of, the way he just rolls around the ring and the way he like, he'll, like <laughs> latch onto somebody and grapple with them and then like, yeah. you know, like the way he'll like roll off. So like yeah like, dude I, I heard like, that in the proposed original sequel this dude got like doused with a bunch of chemicals by like some fucking Dalston type dude and just all of a sudden becomes I like the idea that the sequel to this movie is Street Fighter that's just yeah. me I don't like know. I mean just it's, it's funny it's easy to see why they picked Van Damme for Street Fighter now as Guile because he basically did it in this movie already mm -hmm. he's basically Guile in this movie yeah. yeah but at least they don't have to act like. He's, he's Johnny Cage in American, Mortal like, He's American in this movie, I guess, but like the idea that his parents are from Europe or something, yeah. so it makes it makes the accent have... Dude, it's really weird seeing him as Guile. Man. At, at the beginning of the movie, when they do the flashback and they show him and he's wearing all the San Francisco giant stuff, I'm like, dude, are they going to pretend that he's an American? And then the kids got the accent, and I was uber confused by it, but... Yeah, it was, it was an interesting <laughs> route. And then they mix that shit up, dude, because they got New York Giants gear on this dude and San Francisco Giants. And I'm like, what coast is he fucking <laughs> on, dude? I never noticed that. <laughs> what the fuck is amazing. going on here? Yeah, it's really amazing. Somebody was just like, Giants gear? Okay. <laughs> they just went to the vintage store or whatever, right? 1988, they went to the thrift store. Um, what about giants. you, Jim? What's the performance you want to yeah. highlight? I mean, they're... This is one of those movies where you could kind of pick anybody because everyone is like cranked up to 11. Um, but uh, I, I might as well highlight uh, Jackson. He's he's just such a big dumbass and he just plays it just straight like that. Like uh, drinking beer in a hospital bed is, is really incredible. Like that and just like, yeah. clearly not beating Chung Lee and then just being like, I killed him, I won! And like, and like and he's like parading around for what feels like 10 minutes <laughs> of just like running around and screaming and all that stuff. It's like, what what a uh, what a delight. And I love that Van Damme is, is all like choked up over this guy that he like kind of knows a little for a few days or whatever. Well, he helped him like escape a, from Forrest Whitaker and the other guy. Yeah, their brother. <laughs> but yeah, they're just yeah. like, yeah, all right, I guess we're best friends now, and it's uh, it's like a video game together. Besties. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Sometimes and, uh, I love you, man. That's the um, that's out of everything in this what? movie. What's probably ended up aging the worst is Van Damme, like, implying that video games are just for children. Hmm. <laughs> You're right about that. To be playing video games? <laughs> I can't believe I got to this point and nobody picked Jean-Claude Van Damme. Let me just tell you this. Yeah. This is one of the tightest, sweatiest, bumpiest... <laughs> fucking sexiest male bodies i've ever seen on screen dude like i and, and we talked about this on the four years ago we were like this movie should have been called blood split because it's like van damme's like yo i can do the splits right but like i don't i don't know what it is and frank dude was like yeah, yeah i can do the splits too you see i used to do this all the time <laughs> like in my room i just be doing the splits to train i really i really like van damme in this film because i think it might be difficult to scream in slow motion as yeah. much as he does in this fucking film, dude. You just look up images of Bloodsport, and most of them are Van Damme, like, 
All right. And it's absolutely freaking awesome. That being said, the handler, I guess, for Jackson and for Frank, yeah. I like him too. Yeah. Frank Ducks? No, it's Dukes. Oh, like put up your Dukes. I like him in this yeah. movie. He feels like a character from John Carpenter's Big Trouble in Little China or something like that, but it works yeah. for me. So there you go. All right. Style and structure of this film. I think it's got a really tight, tight pace to it. Um, four years ago, we talked about you hear this bullshit story from Frank Dukes. And of course, this writer is going to be like, sure, let's do this. Very easy to write this film, right? It doesn't take much. Most of the script is just like, this dude fights this dude, this dude fights this dude, this dude fights this dude. Frank Dukes fights Bolo Young at the end, right? Like, that's kind of the whole bit. I, I do like the script, though. Like, it's stretching itself too thin sometimes, like with what it's trying to do. It has to throw in the love interest. It's throwing in some stuff. But for the most part, it doesn't like like any writer today would try to add in so much bullshit thematic material to this movie that doesn't need to be there because this is just a movie about the Kumite, right? This like tournament that happens every five years where all these fighters from around the world come and they just beat the fuck out of each other, right? This movie doesn't try to go beyond that. It doesn't really stretch itself too thin and i like the structure i like the style of it the way this movie is shot in particular the way this movie is edited i think the editing is the star of this movie because it is so tight it goes by so quick and it's never boring to me and the music has a lot to do with that as well we'll get to that but verna what do you think about the style and structure yeah, of blood dude. split <laughs> I'll definitely echo what you're saying, dude. It flies by. Like it's just the, the movie just cruises by. Uh stylistically, I love that it's in Hong Kong. That's one of the things that stands out the most to me is that you get to see Hong Kong. The look of the arena itself is awesome. It's, it's so badass. And then the biggest thing is the slow motion. That's like it's overdone, it's crazy, but it's what makes blood sport. Bloodsport, all the slow motion shots that we get, and like the the posters that you could put up, like a Chong, or Chong Li coming down with the foot, breaking necks and whatnot. Dude, uh, this has got to be is like Zack Snyder's favorite movie, right? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Uh, it's it's insane, and we already touched on it. And I know you guys are going to touch yeah. on it a lot more next week, but it's crazy how it's structured almost exactly like Kickboxer. You got a bit of motivation for this dude to fight someone at the beginning. And then if he loses motivation, you got someone that's going to get hurt towards the end that he's got to get revenge on and it, it amps him up. But uh, yeah, and it, it is, it is, there's not a drop of nuance in this movie. There's no subtlety. And that's why like me is like, I was probably five years old the first time I watched this movie and I got every bit of it and I got every bit of it today too. You know what I mean? So <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that about it, man. Oh, yeah. What about you, Jelani? What do you think about the style and structure? Man, this movie, it's paced well. It's mercifully paced. Uh, it's an hour and 45 minutes or something like that. It's not really long at all. So you get, like, this full plethora, this, 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 all these fights, all this blood, that stage for the fight is fantastic. Like I said, it's bending. It, it breaks and bows in the middle like as it goes by. I know we've mentioned it, but it's so cool. Like at the end of this, they're just fighting on a broken ring. It, it's, it's paced really well, like I said, for the fights. It's Mortal Kombat, except it's more Street Fighter. I would say more Street Fighter. And I love all of the characters that are in with the music and everything that's paced with this film. It's easy. It's canon. Canon films knew exactly what they wanted to do. Action movies. So they do a whole bunch of action movies. They get, you know, meager budgets, make tons of money, get all their return back. That's why Master of the Universe didn't do well because they didn't feel they have the money. <laughs> but if they did, it would be an awesome film. And Bloodsport is shot well. I like a lot of the shots. I like the slow motion. I like when he's like kicking and screaming. It, it has it has a charm to it. So it's it, it's freaking awesome. It's absolutely yeah. brilliant as far as pacing goes and as far as the, the structure. I like his outfits. I like all of Fred Duke's outfits, like like the black pants and yellow sash. It's like his 
I don't know his um he's trying to to honor his master and with those colors. I guess he was wearing those colors as well, but it, it's such a cool little thing that they throw in there. I like Bolo when he has the Harley Davidson thing. It's like a psychological thing to him to like screw with Frank's, Frank's head and then of course blind him. Yeah. He's such a dick, man. <laughs> he is a quintessential <laughs> villain. And he really is. And the fact that they, they make him that way and it works so well in this film, like you need a bad guy. You need an asshole and he works works really well for it. So I know I'm going off, but I love Bolo. I love this st the stage they fight on. I love the, the bullshit story about him be in the, being a little kid and the uh, uh, stealing the sword and getting the training and all that stuff. I love so all of that. You need that. That's what this kind of... Yeah. It's so awesome. It's, I like that you so mentioned clean. the... And I, yeah, I love every I like that movie. you mentioned and it's mercifully I, short. I like that you mentioned the uh the uh the costumes and I'm glad you mentioned the fight choreography because as if it wasn't enough to fabricate the story that you went to this <laughs> alleged mystical fucking fighting tournament and won for two years <laughs> straight secret. and came up with all this bullshit. Yeah, this super yeah. secret thing. And then there's another element. Don't forget, he added this element where he said that he was doing this so he could go and save some fucking orphans for something from the Philippines. Like, that's a real thing that really, like, that's what he's... That's in the movie? Pretty, or that's something It's not thought. in the movie. It's okay. something Frank Duke like, said. Just... He was like, no, this was a CIA undercover operation to understand about... Other people take. would be talking about that. I just want you guys to know you guys are ruining the legend of Frank Dukes to me. I've just believed. <laughs> I've been a believer in my whole life. So hey, I, it's still real to me. But he, he also is apparently these the are all, fight choreographer. All legend. This is a legend. I don't want to get sued. He's it's also apparently the fight choreographer of the movie, and he also claims to have designed each and every one of Van Damme's outfits for the fight and provided them for the fight, dude. So like, <laughs> this dude just can't just like. <laughs> Just rest his laurels, right? What about you, Brooks? What do you think about the style and structure of this film? Just slow down. It's okay, man. It's all right. You have to do everything. Jelani's in another world right now. Brooks, what do you He's think? Like uh, Tommy Wiseau. He's the Tommy Wiseau of martial arts. Agreed. <laughs> Yeah, I love this. I love the. I love the style of this movie because, like, it is what it is. You know, this is like, yeah, you know, this is just an action movie, like through and through. And like, you know, like I said, it does like in the beginning, it kind of drags a little bit for me with the whole like, you know, building up the character of Frank Dukes and like why he has to do this. And it's like it's a very shallow reasons, like, like you know, his. I guess like the guy who trained him, son wanted to fight in the Kumite, but then he died before he could. So now dude has, he's going to fight in the Kumite in his place or whatever. It's like, it's, you know, it's, just, it's simple and it's silly, but like, you know, once it gets to the Kumite, like I said, like shit starts popping off. Like, you know, all the characters start coming, coming in, you know, you get Jackson, you get Bolo, you get like, you know, this, that's when the movie starts. And like, I'm willing to forgive, like, you know, the, the preamble, like, you know, being a little slow, just for that fact, you know, that the uh, once once the Kumite starts popping off, like this movie is just like it just becomes 100 percent fun. Like even the stuff like I don't like about it so much like the stupid romance story, like, oh, yeah, there was this hot blonde reporter girl who was like looking into the Kumite. And then this <laughs> dude was like hassling her at the bar. And so I stepped in and I grabbed his fist and I was like, no way, dude. <laughs> It's like, if I grab this quarter out of your palm, bro, before you can close your hand, then you have to go away. It's we like, need more, so, we need so more impersonations like, from Brooks on this show. I'm just going to throw that I, out there I'll right now. I'll tell you now. this too, man. Like, how many dudes do have we known in our lives, bro, that tell stories? Like shit, that, dude. Just fucking just bullshit. And it's like, it's like the dude from that Twilight Zone episode where the dude is just like, he talks so much shit. He like tells so many stories that aliens come down and, you know, they think he's like the most competent human in the world. Like, <laughs> If aliens came, they think like they didn't think Frank Dukes was like a Superman, basically. It's like this is the dude who's gonna teach us how to fight. Dude, the aliens are gonna show up. They're gonna Frank think that Frank fucking Dukes is the king of the world, man. Yes. 
Frank Dukes and Steven Seagal. Those are the two guys we need. Frank Funny. Dukes apparently also says he saved Steven Seagal from an assassination plot, bro. Like, <laughs> totally, and- dude. I totally believe he did that. <laughs> that's by the way, that's the next dynamite comic that uh Joe is working on with Frank Dukes and Steven Seagal. So uh Joe, Whoa. what do you think about the style and structure of this film? Um it's I I almost hate to say this, but it's perfect. It's weird to to say yeah, that, but it's, it's weird, like, it? yeah, it but it's it is everything. Everything in it is just enough. Like right before the exposition gets to the point where you're like, mm-hmm. come on already, let's it's, it's over, and all the fights are exactly how long they should be <laughs> it's weird like it, it's all structured that way and again it feels like and i know like the book you know save the cat wasn't out at the time but it's almost like someone just heard you, you know frank say this and that was just like let me uh just read a screenwriting book and put it in the order that you're supposed to put it in and put the movie out this and motherfucker wrote the, like how to write a movie in 21 days, the heart method, right? And like was able to just like perfectly make this movie, dude. Like yeah. this is cookie cutter. <laughs> this is why it, this is how it could work, you know? Like this is like I don't know, like it's but, but this is cookie cutter yep. in the best this is how way used to be possible. To yeah, this is <laughs> this is cookie cutter as in mm-hmm. you're going to bake cookies. And you just follow the fucking instructions. You don't get weird about it. You don't go like, oh, what if I do this or that? And you just follow the instructions. You put it in the oven. And it comes out. And the cookies are great. Because <laughs> they knew what they were doing when they gave you the fucking box to bake the cookies. And that's it. And, and that's this movie. So it's fucking great. I hope when we get the uh, finally get the like giant yeah. Blu-ray 4K edition of that, that's that's the quote <laughs> they put on there. Like if you just read the instructions on the fucking box. <laughs> All right. One of the big reasons why this movie works so well for me is the music. And by the way, the cinematography in this movie is really solid. I think it's the one of the I would like to see a remastered version of this, but mm-hmm. if you look at like Van Damme's doing the fucking splits in goddamn Hong Kong and the cities, but no, that's beautiful. That's some of the best photography that Canon films ever put on fucking camera, dude. <laughs> like it's ridiculous, right? It's actually a beautiful film and it's incredibly well shot. And it's, <laughs> it boggles my mind that to say that, but it really is, this man. Is it, it really is. Um, but the music, so the music is uh, mostly by uh, Paul Wurzhog. What do we know him from? Well, he did My Chauffeur in 86. I've never seen that. He did Bloodsport. He did Kickboxer. Then in 91, he did Breathing Fire. And apparently in 2024, he's got a movie coming out that he's done the score for called The Last Kumite. Shut up. Apparently, it's on Wikipedia. It's in red, though. I don't know what the fuck that means, but it's in red. Joe might know what that means, being in red. Um, oh, my goodness. But uh, <laughs> that was an inside joke. So, the... the but, You're like, it's oh, kind no. of a thing, but it's not. Oh, the music. communist movie? <laughs> so, okay, so no, no, no. <laughs> so, the music is fucking phenomenal. The <laughs> bum ba da dum bum bum ba da dum bum bum ba da dum It sounds like fighting game music, man. It sounds like the music in Street Fighter. Like like that, doom, 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 doom. it's kind of repetitive, but it also elaborates on itself. It's got that bit where everybody's like, kumate, kumate. And then it's got Stan fucking Bush. Like, <laughs> like I mean, what the fuck, dude? Stan Bush, I fight to survive. Like, oh my God, this, mu- this movie's music is some of the best ever, in my opinion. What do you think about the music, Verno? Because I love it. Oh, well are you sitting okay the music i used to think that i hated 80s music and then i watched this i'm like no i just hate the 80s music and fucking john claude van damme movies i like it is the epitome of shit i hate other than like the songs that are the soundtrack are bad the asian influence stuff that they're doing is dope but as i say that does it work perfectly for this film absolutely 
Like, it's a huge driving force of, like, getting me excited about it. But do I hate the songs that are in this movie? Now, do I think they're trash music? A hundred thousand percent, bro. bro. I'll tell you this straight like, up, Berna. When I go to the gym, <laughs> which has been a while, but when I go to the gym, that's on my gym playlist. That it totally Spotify, makes bro. sense. It belongs. That's <laughs> where it belongs. And that's where it should stay. It belongs in this movie and on your <laughs> gym playlist. But, yeah, I, I have grown to respect a lot of 80s. <laughs> A lot of 80s music, but not this stuff. But the sound, the 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 score is awesome. It's great. Score is great for it. Yeah. Score is great. What about you, Jelani? What do you think about the music in the film? Yeah, man. This is like heart pumping action music. It's just fight to survive. And you oh, you get pumped for this music, man. It's absolutely beautiful. It has kickbox. Kickboxer, I don't know about this music because I haven't seen that movie in years. But if it's the same guy, I can't wait. I'm just going to treat this like a sequel to one sport. Um, I, I want this music more and more things. Like, it, it's so 80s. It's so just chef's kiss. It works well with this film. It keeps the pace of it. I mean, I love it all around, man. It's pretty good. Hell yeah. What about you, Brooks? What do you think about the music in the film? Sucks. I hate it. I'm kidding, of course. I love, I love the music in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and like this, the parts where it's not, you know, like song or like score. It reminds me a lot of the first. But you don't like Iron Eagle for some reason. Like, I, I, like I don't know what it is. Like, I, I just like there was a certain aspect to it that reminded me a lot of that first Ninja Turtles movie soundtrack. But it, you know, it is definitely like '80s inspired, and like you know. I love my my 80s shit. Well, most of it, you know. You know, there's some there's some bad stuff in there too, but I think this movie kind of like it takes like the so bad it's good 80s kind of music. Yes. You know? You know, when you said it reminded you of the original Team and T movie, now I imagine a remix that goes K-U-M-I-T-E power, K-U-M-I-T-E power. <laughs> Kumite power. The most strong human. Exactly. Speaking of Kumite Power, what about you, Joe? What do you think about the music in the film? Well, I will say with the the first uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, it is tragic that Spin That Wheel isn't on this end. Yeah, yeah, true. That's fucking great. <laughs> but um, this, uh, again, like this is the thing that's just like insane about this movie. The soundtrack's perfect. <laughs> it is it is exactly what you would do. Why would you change a thing about it? It's perfect for what it is. Uh, Stan Bush, again, in Stan Bush s doing songs for two of the greatest movies ever, this and the Transformers animated movie. Like, I mean, come on. What a treat. And impressive. We didn't Most know impressive. how good yeah. we had it, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> exactly and like uh, all of the um uh, and the music's like it's thoughtful like every moment it's like oh this is a cheesy moment where he's like trying to bang that blonde chick so we're gonna have like this kind of 80s music playing and then like uh-oh people are gonna fight each other let's get that music Ooh, like um van damme is being like trailed by those two guys like let's have let's throw a little intrigue into the into the sad track. It, it's just it, mm -hmm. it it's fucking perfect it's perfect i mean this is a yeah it's pretty much a perfect movie <laughs> it what is. does this movie say i i told you it it's is. one of the greatest movies in cinema history because like it shouldn't be as good as it is but it is right and maybe it's because that dude was part of godfather 2 you know what i'm saying yeah. and like i would love to see the cut of this movie where Robert De Niro is doing this like parallel story set like 50 years before. And it's like Frank Deuce's <laughs> grandfather or some shit like that. Or it's the story of Tanaka, you know, and Robert De Niro would play him in 1988. <laughs> totally. <clears throat> but what is this movie saying? What about the, what about the nuance of this film? What about the underlying message that made Frank Dukes, Jean-Claude Van Damme, and everybody else involved in this film feel like this was something so important that they had to make the perfect movie to get this message across. Verno, what is this movie speaking to you? 
uh, I honestly did not think about this until just now. I'm like, oh shit, we got to say what this movie's saying. I mean, you know, earlier you're like, I'm glad I'm first. It's pretty clear. <laughs> it's pretty clear what it's saying. I think the biggest thing it's saying is before the internet, you could say whatever the fuck you wanted and people would just have to believe you. You can just be like, bro, I went to Japan. It was crazy. You're never going to believe what happened. This blonde. Hey, Kumite, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, I w- I'm, I dating this, I'm dating this chick yeah. from Canada. Oh, I met her while I was at the Kumite. She's a reporter. <laughs> and then I left her. She's still, she's still there. She's still she reporting. Told me. No, I mean, what, I mean, what it is saying yeah. is right there, but it's, it's about... Uh, it's about fighting for someone else's honor. It's about honoring your father and honoring the people around you and doing what you're doing, not for you, but for but for other people in a way. You know what I mean? I mean, not in a way. That's exactly what it is. And that's what the by the way, copy paste that for kickboxer next week. That's that's what that's <laughs> that's a lot of that, too. <laughs> it's the same movie, but not as good, man. But anyway, Jelani, what about you? What's this movie speaking to your heart, my friend? Yeah, it's it's a beautiful film. You're absolutely right, Verno. It is like honoring others, and you fight to survive any way you can. <laughs> the struggle is real. It's one of those it's where it's just like there's so many perfect things you could pull from it. It's so many just just actionly manly things that you deal with. Uh, and uh, yeah, you just fight to survive and and honor your family. I think that's pretty much all it would it would be. Sounds good enough that's to me, Jelani. What sport is? I cannot wait to see Kickboxer and see the same thing. Oh, yeah. What about you, Brooks? What do you think this movie's speaking to you? That's it's about bros, dude, and loving your bro, and sticking up for your bro, and playing video games with your bros when you need to. <laughs> And when somebody takes your bro, when somebody beats up your bro and takes his headband and ties it to his thigh, you gotta beat that dude. You gotta beat that dude and you gotta take your bro's headband back and give it to him when he's in the hospital. <laughs> because that's how bros roll. Tell him you love him. Brooks, I would do that for you. That you love him. Brooks, I would do that for you any day. Totally, dude. Any day. I'm, I'm always there for you, bro. Always, bro. Always. Of course. Of course, same, bro Fucking Joe. Same, dude. What about, <laughs> bro Joe? What about you? What's this movie about? Oddly enough, a uh, part of this movie, um, like a lot of other sort of these like action power fantasy kind of movies, what this movie does that most others don't is Van Damme's character because you know. Uh, Frank Ducks and all that is is a fucking lunatic. It's Dukes, Joe. Come on, it's Dukes. Like put up your Dukes. Put up your Dukes. I know it's put up your Dukes. Anyway, it's Dukes. so <laughs> Frank Dukes. Put up your Dukes, man. So with this, this Dukes. Movie, he never <laughs> doubts himself. Like ever, like even as a kid, he knows not to move mm. out of the way of a sword, and like he never, impressive. like nothing ever. There's no, he doesn't have any yep. real obstacles. Frank Dukes There's played nothing. life on God mode, dude. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like this. So if you really look at it, there's this sort of deeper philosophy going on of, of <laughs> what what you can accomplish if you truly embody the feeling that you cannot be defeated and and that you are going to win and and, and this movie like like you know, van damme is just like i'm gonna win this and he does and, and, and there there is something to that i think yeah, I really, I really like that. Actually, it's almost like Frank Dukes had this this kind of like personality for, and it worked for long enough. Yeah. But sometimes you do want to just play your life like it's God mode, right? Yep. For me, what this movie's saying about me, and this is this really struck That's me it. in this movie, and it's very similar to what Brooks was saying. This movie is about your bros. Here's here's something that's crazy. <clears throat> we can talk about these movies, like like. You know, one of my greatest mistakes of this year was thinking that Missing in Action was a great movie. 
to revisit, right? Because it wasn't, right? There was no thematic <laughs> relevance there. It was not. <laughs> but in this movie, unlike a lot of those 80s action canon type films, which were so bro -y, so macho, that they almost lead to these ideas of what some people call toxic masculinity. There is no toxic masculinity in the heroes of this movie. Because I'm going to tell you this, the most real moment in this movie, as ridiculous as it may seem to some people, is when Frank goes to see Jackson and he tells him, I brought, he gives him back his headband and Jackson looks at him, he says, anytime, any place, you need me, I'll be there. I feel that way about Jelani. I feel that way about Brooks. Fuck, nowadays, I feel that way about Verno and Joe. I feel that way about y'all. I got people in my life. Hammer Time Hulse, you will always be there for me when I need them, right? Mike, the voice Matthews, will always be there for me when I need them. These are the male, like, for those of us that are, this, this movie's made for men. Like, and if you're a woman and love this movie, movie, that's awesome. But this movie is made for what they thought were men in 1988 or whatever the fuck. Here's it's the point, though. Thing. This movie, as soon as Jackson says that to Frank, what does Frank say? Frank says, I love you. And he doesn't say it in a comedic bit mm -hmm. or anything like that. He says, I love you. This movie is telling us, no matter how macho and manly you may feel like you are, the most fucking badass dude in history, which is Frank Dukes' idea of himself, <laughs> is not afraid to tell his friends <laughs> that he loves them. Tell your friends you love them. Allegedly. Be there for them. Stick by them. Let that, that... There's nothing different than someone I'm fucking, that love, someone I've, I'm, I'm, I'm having an intimate relationship with, but I, I truly care about that person. There's really no difference between that, me and Brooks and Jelani, except for the fact that we... Clip it. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the fact that, you know, maybe we're not fucking. Maybe. Oh, you I don't know. know. Uh, you know, whatever. Um, but no, that, that yeah. I think that's actually rather bold for this movie. You live your kind life, of man. portray <laughs> that kind of brotherly love. It is um, cool that he actually, like, you know, just straight up says, like, he, that he loves his bro. Yeah. Like, even after going through all this shit. Even, even like, like <laughs> the, the I fucked the most powerful man in the world for you just to get your fucking stupid bandana back. It, it fits Love in what I kept thinking about. The, just the looks that you see on his face. Like, if you think about Van Damme's, like, signature look, what he's doing in this movie, it's that he's almost on the edge of tears. You know what I mean? Like, there's a vulnerability mm -hmm. that he brings to the role that, like, Steven Seagal or Chuck Norris wouldn't have brought to this role. Yes! It's, there's a vulnerability. And and I guess, I, I guess the point I'm trying to say is it's okay to be vulnerable if you if you're if you're a man and you're a manly man, it's okay to be vulnerable and tell your manly man friends that you fucking love them and to actually act on that love because like DC Talk told us, love is a verb. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, that's what I got. So this movie's telling me it's okay to love your bros. So thank you, Brooks, for that. Uh my bro Brooks. Um, all right, time to rate the film. You out there in the chat, out of five possible you digs. And I've already seen a lot of fives at the beginning of the show. Like people couldn't even wait. They were like, five you digs, <laughs> five you digs. I love this movie. Verno, kick us off. What do you think? And you out there in the chat, add in. I mean, I, 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 I honestly, I love hearing everything that, you, I mean, you guys have just confirmed what's been in the back of my mind about this movie for my entire life. I haven't had a conversation about blood sport in 25 plus years. I, I guarantee you that. But I love the shit out of this movie when I was a kid. And like it was it was very, very cool to go back. And just like I've said to you a million times, Robbie, like there are so many movies that I would have never revisited <clears throat> if I didn't get hooked up with you fucking crazy fuckers in the PCP army and all this. You know what I mean? I love you, Verno. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I was thrilled to to rewatch this. And I was thrilled to rewatch Kickboxer, too. It, it's just as badass almost. But uh. Is it, is it a perfect movie? No. But do, do I get to give it a five because I can do whatever I want? Sure. So I'm going to give it a five, man. It's it's awesome. It was one of the best movies of my childhood. My brother was three years older than me. He used to beat the shit out of me. And he took karate, and I blame most of that on this movie. So five <laughs> you days, man. A perfect score from <laughs> Bruno, man. I love you, dude. What about you, Jelani? Out of five you digs, what do you rate this film? Mm. 
man. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think I think it is? I know, man. I'm delayed. It's good. So I love it. I'm just gonna do what I can. Make it more dramatic. Five, five you digs. Of course, it's the five. It's awesome. It's one of the best action movies I've ever watched, ever. And I, I was surprised because when we rewatched it in 2019, we were all shocked at how good this movie was. Like, it shouldn't have been this good. And we've said this too many times. But it, it, it for all rights and intents and purposes, this thing should be a flop. This should be a horrible film. We should be talking about how bad it is, how the FBI, the plot's weak, all that stuff. We're supposed to say all this, but with this film, it says so much to you, like your your animalistic spirit. That's what I'm going to call it. It's just the way you feel about this film. Like, it makes you a man. Makes you feel <laughs> something. I don't know what it is about it, but it, it's that testosterone, man. That testosterone that flows. And it's such a great just action flick. It's so short. It's to the point. It tells everything it does. The music's great. The cast is great. Forrest Whitaker's in it. Five you digs. And, and I will say Canon's best film next to Master of the Universe. I will agree with that assessment. And I will say this. When we reviewed this film over four years ago, Jelani gave it a 4.5. So it's increased in his mind. What about you, Brooks? Out of five you digs, what do you give Blood Sport? It's awesome. Wow. This Watch movie it. wasn't as good as Enter the Dragon. But it doesn't matter. It's still a five. This movie is dope as fuck. I love it. You know, despite all the goofiness, despite all the, yeah, you know, the flaws, like, it doesn't matter, dude. Like, the Kumite shit, it's, like, just so good that, like, it's just such an enjoyable viewing experience for me that, you know, I can't, I can't even front, man. It's a five all the way. Over four years ago, when we last talked about this film, Brooks gave it a four. So Brooks really? significantly <laughs> likes this movie even more, too. Yes. I think we were trying to be real critics back then yeah. in 2019. No, I'll tell you what it is, dude. It's you guys. Too seriously. Well, you, yeah. it's you guys immersed yourself in revisiting so many of these old 80s movies. Now you yeah. have so much more to judge it off of. It's a different movie. experience this time, too. Like, you can tell. We watch a modern. If we watch, if Bloodsport came out today, it would is. be like yeah. two point five three. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> but I don't think I this did. John Claude Van Damme is going to go anywhere. This guy yeah. don't have the chops. <laughs> Bloodsport, more like Bloodshot, because that movie is so mediocre. <laughs> no shit. But if Bloodshot came out in nineteen eighty five, we would love that fucking movie, man. <laughs> like, oh, it's or, the best movie ever, dude. Yeah. More like board sport. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Joe? Perfect scores across board the board sport. so far. Where do you sit? Yeah. No, uh, yeah, no, I, I I have to give it a five. Like for a movie to be so good that you don't care that the plot makes nothing close to resembling any sense. No. That it's like, wh why do these agents even fucking want Van Damme after a while? Like, and then it's like a lethal weapon, dude. And then it's like, oh, it's impossible. The for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, it's impossible to find uh, what's where this Kumite place is. And then Van Damme's like, yo, FBI, uh, broad, you want to come and, and, and watch us murder people? And, and they're they're like, yeah, a lady can just like turn the Kumite into the police. <laughs> yeah, they're it's like, yeah, sure, whatever, fine, just, just <laughs> yeah. show up. Who cares? Watch whatever you want, and 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 that it's still incredible. Is just great. This is the greatest film in cinematic history. <laughs> so I can do nothing less than give this movie a five. And yes, the last time we reviewed this movie, I gave it a four as well, Brooks. But uh, no, nah, this movie's a fucking five. Why? Because we judge movies on many things here. Right, one of Jelani's favorite things is rewatchability. This movie is rewatchable as fuck, sure. right? And I like yeah. to always say, I like to think about a movie no. with what the intent you can watch it over is. Time. You can watch it while you're doing stuff. I like to think about a movie with what is the intent behind the film, and this movie made exactly the movie it was intending to make. There was no interference. 
There is no message lost. There is no director's cut needed. This is a perfectly made movie. The music, like, Joe, you already said it all. Somehow, the story and the pacing and the acting, it's fucking perfect. Somehow, the score <laughs> is perfect. Somehow, everything about this movie is perfect. Mm -hmm. And it just goes to show you, you don't have to take yourself too seriously to make a great film. So that's five for me. And everybody else here on the panel and everybody in the chat, <laughs> that is a resounding five you digs all around average score. A perfect film here, y'all. Blood sport. But you know what? Watch it. Van Damme November is not over. Next week, join us for Blood Sport Part 2, Kickboxer. Oh, <laughs> That's going to be a fun one. Very excited for that. And we are in the midst of Holiday Horror Fest. Dylan started it last night with a Hulu movie, Pilgrim. But I will be joining Dylan this Saturday evening to talk about Eli Roth's Thanksgiving. And I'm so excited for Eli Roth to put out a new horror film that I'm going to be talking about it twice because <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be on Blood Splatter Chatter as well talking about this movie. Holiday Horror Fest is here. Thanksgiving horror films over at DHS. Uh, Christmas horror films at DHS and PCP. And a New Year's film for DHS and for PCP. So Holiday right. Horror Fest is underway, y'all. Check us out. Verno, thank you so much for being here. To review this perfect movie, I love you. What do you uh, What do you got coming up, man? Final thoughts. Hell yeah, man! And I love you too, brother. And I'm so glad I did this. I'm, I, and I'm yeah. I'm tempted to watch kick uh, Kickboxer again, dude. Um, I got room if you want it, Vernon. I know that, that's come, what I'm like, I might just. Well, my my thought was, I mean, am I gonna say the same shit? It's gonna, but fuck, I. You guys are gonna have to say the same shit. Let's all say the same <laughs> shit. I don't know. Um. Uh, what we got going on, I think the main reason why I didn't do Holiday Horror Fest because I wanted to do November, which is part of the reason why I was telling you to call it Van Damme Vember or whatever, but you were right, you were right. But what I'm doing is uh, all of these horror movies that have came out in the last few months, we're catching up on a bunch of bangers this month. We just did uh, an incredible movie. If you like uh, Spanish horror, dude, When Evil Lurks is one of the... Gnar if you like horror, if you like movies and gnarly shit happening in movies, go watch When Evil Lurks. And then go check out our show we did last week. We're doing an Amazon Prime original. I'm going to be talking with Robbie about that Eli Roth horror movie. And then at the end of the month, we're doing Talk to Me, which a lot of people say I'm the biggest horror movie of the year. So just coming out of Horror Fest, like we're doing like four huge banger movies this month. So we're, uh, we're having a lot of fun. Blood Splatter Chatter. Check us out. Because someone can please drop a link in the in the in the chat down there to sub up to Blood Splatter Chatter as well as Go Figure Reviews. Jelani just celebrating 300 subscribers and one year on YouTube. Congratulations! I've been here for 130 years, but congratulations on the one year. Um, what you got coming up, man? Thank you for being here. Final thoughts, and I love you, Jelani. Well, we've got a few things. Um, I've got. A you too, Robbie. Thank you. Um, <laughs> this has been fun, man. I love all you guys. You guys are the best. So, of course, he's laughing. That means it's delayed. Um, I'm going to say I love you guys, and I appreciate you. And go figure reviews. We've got one, like, uh, video that we did, which is our remix, our first episode. It came out terribly. <laughs> And I finally got it edited again. So guys, check that out. I have um, the Dark Phoenix, which Brooks did a full review by himself. Ooh, baby. And I'm really proud of that. So that's the Dark Phoenix there. Um, oh, yeah. New camera. Nice. Looking into. And uh, if you've got the Brooks picture, yeah. Brooks, which redhead are we talking Brooks about? Does which does solo review. Camera? Yeah. That's the broken in new camera. So check us out. Oh, uh, I think the Dark Phoenix is the one with the shirt. And then, of course, we got the Muhammad Ali two-pack uh, figure review that came out. That's my namesake. It was a Marvel – I'm sorry, it's not Marvel. It's Mattel Creations uh, WWE Ultimate figure. It's two figures. It's a referee nice. and a boxer. Nice and we review both of those. So check it out. It is very really nice set. Nice packaging. It's awesome. Looks it's my, one of my favorite figures of the year, I would say. 
Hell yeah. Brooks, thank you so much for being yeah. here. I so love check you. Check us out. Go through your reviews. Um, we got a lot more stuff coming. We were going to do a live stream, but yeah. Brooks, thank you so much for being here. I love you. Final thoughts. I just uh, I want to throw out a quote from, from Bolo. You're next. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good movie, You're Next. You should check it out if you haven't seen it. I'll let you borrow the Blu-ray. Uh, Joe, I fucking love you, man. Thank you for being here. Any final thoughts? What you got coming up? Well, uh, Sheen is still happening. Uh, issue three came out, I think, last week. So, uh, you know, check that out. Two more after that. And then that's a wrap. I just did the uh, lettering pass on the King Arthur and the Knights of Justice uh, <clears throat> graphic novel. It's going to be out March 12th. Uh, so uh, we're going to make those few little tweaks and, and get this ready to go to the printer and, and be out on time. So that's exciting. I wrote a chapter for uh, an unannounced graphic novel. So hopefully uh, be able to talk about that more soon. And, um, and also, uh, how much more room you got on that uh, kickboxer panel for next week? Because... Uh, <laughs> i got room for you joe if you want it <laughs> all right because i i, I kind of went through the same arc that verto and like i was like i i didn't put that down i like because i try not to be too greedy like just greedy <laughs> enough with these things right and then i was like i watched blood sport and i'm like ah fuck i want to watch kickboxing anyway, so. <laughs> they got to the point where it's the glass i'm like fuck yeah it's this one oh my god the glass <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that all is set for us next week is is the three of us, me, Jelani, and Brooks, and Stu. So yeah, we got room for you two, one hundred percent. Well, if I knew oh it was Stu, I would have been all over. But Joe, go ahead. We maybe we could take turns, Joe. Maybe no, we, we can all turns. do it. That's what I'm saying. We have room for all all of us. All right, fuck it. I'm down, dude. Yeah, it, it's, it would be Let's this. It. it would be it would be this panel plus Stu. Oh, perfect. This is the fucking fireest yeah. panel I've ever been on. Yeah. yeah so be not down. only would we perfect. have the delayed the internet movie. of Delaney, we would have the bad <laughs> microphone from Stu <laughs> oh. as well. Excited. You will not have to. Yay! He's working on it. It's getting better. It's getting better. It's getting better. All it right. Better. And once again, thank you all so much Shut for being up. here. I want to hear it. Next week, <laughs> Kickboxer here on Van Dam November. And after that's going to be Universal Soldier. That's the winner of the PCP Army Van Dam November poll. But do join me on Dylan's Horror Show for Thanksgiving. The Eli Roth film. And then I think, was it next week? Or is it on Thanksgiving? We're releasing the Thanksgiving video? I think I'm going to release. Don't quote me on it. It'll be out sometime next week. <laughs> you <laughs> should too. do it on Thanksgiving, bro. I think I will, but uh, I don't know if anyone will show up. You know what I mean? It's Thanksgiving. They're busy. I, I might put it. will be out by Thanksgiving 100,000%. It might be the day before. Okay, that, that, that makes some sense because everybody's going to be too busy watching the Cowboys kick ass. Anyway, thank you all <laughs> for being here. PCP Movie Night. Horror Fest is not quite over. Check out Dylan's Horror Show. It never ends there. And Holiday Horror Fest is already underway. So do check out Dylan's Horror Show throughout November. And then PCP will be joining. And Manny is joining for Holiday Horror Fest as well. And he's got some nice surprises. We'll be dropping some promos very soon on Instagram and on Facebook to really start kicking this shit off into high gear. And the last thing I got to say is this. I'm trying to think of a quote from this movie that we haven't said already. Um, <laughs> well, I love you, bro. <laughs> and, I call uh, for it, kid. Aren't you too old for video games? Click. <laughs> oh, damn. Those are good ones. I'll just end it with this. Uh, I fight to survive.